Thank you for being here for the DA201 Data Discovery in Google Cloud session. Um, I'm Shekhar Bapat. I'm the product manager for Data Catalog. As you might be aware that we announced Data Catalog beta yesterday. Um, I'll be talking about Data Catalog and put it in the context of something that is on everyone's mind, that is data governance. And with me on stage today, I would have uh, Renata sitting here and Dimas, both from Gojek, who've been collaborating with us for the good part of last one year and have developed applications using the back end of Data Catalog. And they'll be doing a demo of that. So this is the agenda. We are going to do an overview, talk about the bigger trends. We'll talk about Data Catalog, the overview, the architecture, the various features that we want to highlight. Uh, in the context of overall data governance. And then I'll do a little demo, and then it, I will hand it over to Renata and Dimas, who will talk about their application that they have built for Gojek, and they're also going to do a short demo. We hope to fit all this into the allocated time and also leave some time for questions. So here's the overview and trends, right? So what is driving data governance initiatives? A lot of you are very interested in how to manage your data, how to discover your data, because we are in a world where there is no shortage of data, right? Data is everywhere. We are drowning in data. The question is, how do we make good use of the data? How do we find the relevant data, the right data, to drive your decisions? And in the context of things like GDPR, uh, you know, the California Act, HIPAA, et cetera, how do we actually govern the data? How do we make sure that the right people have access to the right data, and then you can generate reports and be compliant and not get in trouble, right? So there's the risk management part of it that needs to be managed. There are the operational efficiencies and other aspects that you need to tackle. And essentially, if you do not manage it, you don't have any control over your data. And data governance is driven by these you know, bigger requirements. So in that context, Data Catalog gives you a framework, a foundation for building your data governance services. And so we have a pretty aggressive roadmap, but we start with data discovery, right? Because without proper data discovery, you have nothing. And the organizations need an effective solution for data discovery, right? And the challenge of data discovery is that your data is not all in one place. It's in disparate places. It's in different systems. It's spread all over. So how does an analyst, let's take the canonical case of an analyst who recently joined the organization and needs to figure out what data, to, what data they have access to and how they can get access to it and how do they make sense of it. And there is a need for the data discovery tool. So what we have, this is the context of why it is needed. So we have built a system that provides a unified view of all your data assets. And we'll start initially with the data assets in GCP. Let's say you have data assets in GCP and different systems like BigQuery, PubSub, GCS, and going forward, lots of different systems. We give you a way to discover your data that is spread across all these systems. And it is a smart catalog in the sense that you have to do minimal work. So before I go into that, a little bit of history, right? How did we come across this? How did we come up with this notion of building a data catalog? Well, Google has been dealing with a large number of data assets for many years. And Google felt the need to build something for itself a long back. And we are in our third iteration of this internal data catalog that handles more than a million objects, and it's used by more than 30,000 active Googlers. So we have built a very scalable system. And now we want to take that underlying technology and make the data catalog available to our GCP customers. So that's the history. Now, talking about the data catalog, in addition to the technical metadata, I'll talk about what, is, what we consider technical metadata and what we consider business metadata. We enable users to annotate business metadata, and that too in a collaborative manner to add overall value and put data intelligence in the data assets. Right? And as I mentioned earlier, Data Catalog provides the foundation for data governance. Right? So Data Catalog was in alpha for a while, and we recently announced beta. In the current incarnation, this is the overview. Right? 
data catalog automatically ingests metadata from BigQuery, PubSub, and GCS, and it provides a simple search interface for data discovery. Your technical users, as well as your business users, can easily access it. It supports a UI, as well as an API, so that you can do all kinds of bulk annotation of data. We have the innovation here in business metadata. Instead of having simple tags, we provide schematized tags to capture really rich business metadata. We'll talk about that in a moment. And as I mentioned, we auto-ingest the data. Another strong feature, another feature that I'm very proud of is that we have ACL controls on the business metadata that are also you know, very strong. And for technical metadata, they're actually built in. They just leverage the existing ACL, so you as a user have to do very little extra work. The last bullet is very attractive to many of our customers because there is a lot of data. Our customers have thousands of, let's say, BigQuery tables, and each has maybe hundreds of columns. And it's very hard to easily identify PII data. So we offer an integration with DLP, Data Loss Prevention Service, which automatically scans the data and creates appropriate tags to identify sensitive data like PII data. So a little bit about the data catalog architecture. Internally, you know, if I have to identify two blocks, it's like we have a metadata store. It's a transactional store, and we internally we use Spanner. We also have a search index that we built in. The search index leverages the same technology that powers Gmail and Google Drive, which has ACL checks built into it, and it's a very scalable uh, performance system. So we know that we can build a system that is really, really scalable. Now talking about you know, what does it do to you as a user, it makes data discovery available at your fingertips without almost any additional effort. Because since the data catalog automatically syncs all the metadata from all these various sources and puts them in an index, you can do simple keyword search. And anybody can just find appropriate matches. If you're a power user, it also enables you to do facet search just like you can do for G Drive or, or Gmail. Right? So you can say, OK, I want to look only for table names, or I want to look only for certain views, or I want to look for assets where the column matches a particular keyword. Or I have created tags that say, hey, this is PII. So show me everything that matches PII. And in the demo, I will show more. But a combination of simple keyword search and really powerful facet search enables you to do data discovery very, very easily. Right? Now, in addition to the UI, as I mentioned, if you have lots and lots of data, in order to annotate them in an effective way, we enable you to do bulk updates of metadata through API. And in beta, we are going to be supporting Python, Java, and Node.js language libraries to make it very easy for you to, to do the API integration in a in a, in a programmatic way. Now, API enables uh, our customers to build enterprise applications that are very specific to their needs. It also enables customers to build their own front end if they choose to do so and use the data catalog back end. I would like to point out that you know, Gojek is one of our customers who have worked closely with us and built such a front end. And they will be on stage here with me shortly to do a demo of that. So you know, I talked briefly, I kind of referred to technical and business metadata. And since it's kind of central to my discussion, I want to spend just a few seconds talking about our notion, our terminology. You know, what is technical metadata and what is business metadata? Right? So technical metadata is things like table names, data sets name, column names, table descriptions, date created, date modified, et cetera. The metadata that is already there in the source system that we refer to as technical metadata. And as I mentioned earlier, we automatically sync that metadata from the source system into data catalog and put that in the index. So if you create a new table in BigQuery, within like three seconds, that metadata shows up. There is no need for you as a user to manually register these data assets. Right? So that is automatic. But in addition to that, there is a lot of business context that needs to be attached to the data. Things like, well, does this data asset have PII? Or who is the data owner? Does it have a delete by requirement, delete by certain date? Or does it have a retain till certain date requirement? What's the data quality score, right? What's the cardinality? There's all kinds of other relevant information that needs to be stored. 
And without a proper system to store this metadata, our customers tell us that, well, they leave it in some wiki page, some confluent page, or some you know, spreadsheet, and it's not very searchable, and it's not very usable. Did I accidentally click that? OK, sorry. So I am having some clicker issues. All right. Now, here's an example on the right side of what the business metadata looks like. Right? So the business metadata is schematized tags. As I mentioned, unlike other data catalogs where the business tags can be simple text strings, we allow you to capture really rich business metadata using schema. We believe that just like when you have complex data, you need schema to manage it. Since you have complex metadata, we give you the ability to create schema for your metadata. We call them templates. So a template can have multiple fields, and you can have, I don't know if you can read this from here, uh, you can basically attach information like, is this data asset approved for use? Uh, you know, what is the, does it have PII? What is the type of PII? And there are currently you know, five data types that we support. We support string, we support double, Boolean, enumerated, and date time. And using these five types, you can create really rich templates, and you can use these templates to create individual tags that you can attach to individual data assets. The next slides is sort of an illustration. For example, let's assume that you have this you know, toy example of a customer table, and you have certain columns in that table. Won't it be great if you could have some sort of a sticky note, an electronic sticky note, if I may, some sort of a schematized tag that has somehow captured all this rich information. For example, the common thing that analysts do when they come to work in the morning is say, OK, I need to generate a report. I need to know if the last night's ETL job ran successfully. I wish somebody could tell me, and I didn't have to call data engineering, as to, hey, what was the status of the last night's ETL job? How many rows were ingested? Did we have any errors? Did we have any warnings? Now, imagine there was a similar tag, the data governance that, that told you that what is the data classification? Is it public? Is it private? Is it sensitive? Where in the life cycle is this data? Is it in prod? Is it in test? Is it deprecated to be deleted? Where does it stand? What is the data quality tag? Right? What is the completeness of this data? What is the freshness of this data? Right? Does it actually meet the criteria, or has it fallen off? And somehow I should you know, look at it with suspicion, saying maybe this is not the right data. We allow you to create such schematized tags to capture all this rich business metadata so that when you come across a data asset, it gives you the necessary context to use it in a meaningful way. We also enable you to create tags at a column level. So you can say, for these columns, the PII is true, and this is the type of PII. This column might have some funny name, but it's actually SSN. We are using social security number. This has email address. There is another thing, for example, Oftentimes, you come across a data, a column, and say, OK, how am I supposed to use this? How was it calculated? For example, in this case, we say lifetime value, lifetime value of your customer. It's like, OK, what was the formula used to calculate it? How shall I interpret that? All that rich business metadata that you need in order to really leverage your data asset now can be actually put right next to the data, and it becomes searchable. So you can search by saying, show me show me everything that has PII access. Now, when I talk about discovery, one of the things that is really, really important is that who has access to what, right? In many traditional data catalogs, you have to actually register your data asset, and then you have to set a separate set of permissions, separate set of ACLs. What we have done is we say, OK, you don't need to do that. First of all, we do auto-ingestion of metadata, and then we honor the same ACLs that govern data assets in your source system. So in this example, we have two users. User one has, say, read access to all data sets in BQ. And user two has read access to only the first three data sets, has metadata read access to the fourth data set, and no access to the fifth data set. The view that user two has in data catalog is that they can discover A, B, C, and D. When they click on the D data asset, though, they won't be able to see the actual data. When it comes to the last data asset, E, since they do not have any access, data catalog search actually does ACL checks. And when you run the search in that 500 millisecond that we try to return results, we probably run you know, 100,000 plus ACL checks to say, this user should see what? What are they allowed to see? And we show them the right data assets 
So you do not need to do any additional ACLs, and you're, there is no data exfiltration of data or metadata exfiltration of any kind. So your data is safe in that sense. The ACL checks that I talk about also apply to the business metadata tags. So in this case, in this example, we have three sets of tags. We have an ETL tag, a data governance tag, and a data quality tag. Now, data governance is able to create tags that only they can see, because oftentimes they put very sensitive information in that metadata, and maybe they do not want everybody to be able to see that. So our metadata tags, the business tags, are also ACL. Now, many of our customers come to us and say, oh, this is great, and they told us that. At the same time, you know, even though it's programmatic and it has all these smarts, our customers tell us there's lots of data where the column names are not correct. The column might say column 17 or something, but actually it has PII data. What should we do? So we have worked with DLP to provide the integration that I referred to earlier. And using that, you can use DLP to scan your data. Either you can do full scan or you can do sample scan. And the integration enables you to leave the data as is, but attach, the DLP will automatically scan and attach the, the metadata that will identify your data to say, okay, this is you know, PII data, and the type of PII is, let's say, email address, and this is my confidence level, like 99% certain that this is the kind of data, which allows you to process large amounts of data automatically and identify PI information, which can lead to better data governance, because then you can say, okay, who should have access to it? Why is this accessible to everybody? And then do the necessary controls. Okay. Um, a brief, this thing about pricing, we wanted to make data catalog very accessible, eminently accessible to all our users. And at the same time, you know, we didn't want to make it entirely free for various reasons that it will be abused, et cetera. So our pricing is, you know, as I mentioned here, uh, it's $100 per gigabyte per month of stored metadata. That is business metadata. There is no charge for technical metadata because technical metadata resides in the source systems. And the way we look at it, you know, you have already paid for it. We don't want to charge again. Uh, also, we give you one megabyte of business metadata free so that you can try things out. In terms of API pricing, there is a second dimension, and you know, we have one million catalog API calls free included for every user, and we believe most users would not need more than that. But in the off chance that you're developing some application that calls lots of API, you know, it's like $10 per 100,000 API per month. So it's a very attractive uh, pricing. We are working closely with a number of partners, Colibra, Informatica, Tableau, and Looker. And they will be using our API. So I mentioned the APIs are open and free. You know, we believe that it's your metadata. You can do whatever you want to do with it. And using those APIs, they will be providing integration in future so that your on-prem metadata can also be ingested into data catalog so that you will have one catalog to find all your data assets, and you won't have to go to multiple places. So at this point, I'd like to switch over to a brief demo. So I wanted to show you what the data catalog looks like. It's early. Uh, we are close to beta. We are not there yet. In the next few weeks, you know, hopefully we will update some of these things. But I want to show you how data catalog looks like. This will show up in your console. And any of you, if you want to start accessing data catalog today, uh, I can whitelist you, and you can start using the alpha that's available. So the data catalog UI looks as follows. It's organized along the lines of cards. We have different cards. There's a card for exploring data assets. And each of these links are clickable, and you can just click them to, to look for data assets. And you can go back here. You can create your tag templates. You can explore your tag templates. You can create your tag templates. There is search tips. You can search using tags, asset types, column, bucket names, as I mentioned. It's a rich facet search. And there is a link to an online documentation. On the left side, we show the popular tables. In this current incarnation, it says, OK, we'll look at the usage, say, in BigQuery. And which are the really popular tables we want to show you so that you don't even have to search for this. We plan to develop it in this manner that in future, it will be more customized. Uh, my goal is that 50% of the time, you shouldn't even have to go for you know, the search box. You should say, oh, how did it, this read my mind? This is exactly what I was looking for. The other 50% of the time, maybe you go search for the data assets that you want. 
Um, briefly, I want to show you, for example, if I look for all tables and views, and I so did that too quickly, I guess. So we have all these search results here that match the table. I haven't even looked for anything in particular in terms of keyword. But I found this table, and this is in data catalog. It shows me the schema. It shows me the details. And there is an integration built in with BigQuery. So from data catalog, if you like that particular table, you click on it, it launches BigQuery. And you can start querying. You can look at the preview. And you can, you know, this is the integration we provide. But in addition, in addition, if I say bookings, let's say, I found a table, and in this table, I have all these tags, the kind of tags that I talked about. We have the data discovery tag, data governance tag, quality tag, template tag. So let's look at the data governance tag. Uh, this sort of illustrates how I can actually categorize the data. And I say, you know, I have the data classification as an enumerated type, and I can choose the category to say, is it public, sensitive, confidential, regulatory? I can specify the data lifecycle. Is it in prep? Is it in test? Is it in prod, et cetera? And I can specify all kinds of rich metadata tags, as I talked about. Right? The other thing that I wanted to demonstrate is how we do ACL controls. So in this case, I have two windows. And here, I'm logged in as an admin who has access to everything. And here, I'm logged in as an analyst who has access to only you know, limited things. And in this case, when I look for bookings, I should find the same set of tables. I should find the same set of tables, right? On the other hand, if I go to, say, finance, I find these two tables here and these two tables here. Now, in this case, when I click on this table and try to access the data, I should be able to access the data because I do have permission. I can see this data. I can preview this data. In the other case, I'm an analyst. I can discover this data. I can discover the metadata. But if I actually try to access the data, I should get an error. I see this error message, and I cannot preview it. Now, that shows that the ACLs are working. If, similarly, I go to the data asset that I do not have access to, as, you know, as, a, as an admin, I have access to HR data. I see all this. As an analyst, I go to HR data. Well, I don't have access to HR data. That just quickly shows the two things that I wanted to highlight. One is the schematized metadata, the tags that we create. And the second thing is the ACLs. At this point, I would like to invite my buddies from Gojek, uh, Renata and Dimas, who have, as I mentioned, just to give the context, who have developed uh, the Gojek front end, because they, ha they had a front end that they were using. And now they have kept the same front end, but they're using the data catalog back end. Without further ado. OK. Thank you, Shekhar. Uh, and thank you, Google, for having us here. And thank you, guys, for joining our session. Uh, here we are from Gojek. My name is Dimas. I am Data Warehouse Manager in Gojek. Uh, before we are go deeper into how we are implementing data catalog API in our uh, data discovery tools, we would like to introduce Gojek to you first. So Gojek is actually a technology company that has purpose to improve people's quality of life. Okay, and so I believe not many of you know that actually Gojek starting as a call center in 2010 for the OJEC services, which is OJEC actually is a term in Indonesia for motorcycle ride hailing or motorcycle taxi. Five years until after that, we are launched our mobile apps with three initial services, which is GoRide, GoSend, and GoShop. And starting in 2016, we would like to become a mobile app for daily needs, and we are starting to expand into more than 200 provinces in Indonesia and launch more than 20 services. And just last year, in 2018, we are making a story by doing international expansion to Vietnam, Thailand, and Singapore. In the beginning, Gojek is built to provide a solution for our informal sectors. Because here in Indonesia, we have so many challenges for the informal sector. Some of the challenges that we would like Gojek to solve is first, we would like to solve inefficiency of time and accessibility, both for the customer and service provider. 
Because in early days, if you would like to have an object services, we need to go to the main street, we need to find an available, available object there, and in the other hand, most of the time from the service provider itself are wasting to waiting for the customer rather than providing the service. And the last one, Gojek would like also to empower our service provider for the financial services so they are able to plan their future instead of only earning money for one day. Um, so hi everyone, my name is Renata and I'm currently the product manager in the business intelligence core team um, at Gojek. So like just what they must say, um, we at Gojek, we are here to solve real problems and um, when we started off in 2010, we started off with just one service, which is just a ride hailing business. However, as time, as you can imagine, Indonesia, we are a developing as well as a growing nation. So there are a lot of problems that are there to be solved, a lot of opportunity that we can help on. And that's the reason why we grow to now more than 20 services in 2018. Um, so when you, when you hear like more than 20 services, like what can you provide to your user? There seems to be like too many services. So we provide user ranging from payment services to financial services to as well as um, lifestyle services um, like GoGlam. So GoGlam is basically you can con get connected to a professional hairstylist, and that hairstylist can come to your home and get you a fresh new look. Or we have GoDaily, which is a basically a daily subscription service. So you can de get delivered uh, your daily household needs, like tissues, um, rice, uh, mineral water, in a scheduled basis, either you want it on a weekly basis or a monthly basis. So, we're not only growing in terms of the number of services that we are providing to our user, but also regionally. So we are now live, not only obviously in Indonesia, but also in Singapore, Thailand, and Vietnam. And users have been trusting us by, you can see the numbers, uh, with 130 million apps download. We are partnering with more than 2 million drivers and 400,000 more merchants. And we are now transacting more than 100 million monthly transactions. Cool. So as our business grows, so does our data. As you can imagine, when you add one service type and or you add, you expand to one more region. It doesn't go linearly. It just doesn't go like when you add one services, you add one database. It doesn't go like that. So the data ecosystem become much more complex. Um, even though we, ha we are using BigQuery as our data warehouse, which already simplify a lot of these complexities. However, data is not just raw data that you get from your application, right? Um, it also includes dashboard that you have um, in a lot of data visualization tools like Metabase, Tableau, and also analysis that a lot of your data teams have created. Like we have the business intelligent team, we have data science, we have research team. And on top of that as well, you have your people inside your company, which also provide a lot of those data. So um, on top of this complexity and the variety of data that you have, and that we have. Um, we are so experiencing a growing number of volume of data. So in a month-to-month -month basis, we are growing 32% in a month-to-month -month in terms of volume of data that we are getting from our um, application. And also we have more than 700 data sources right now that we need to aggregate as a data team and more than tens of thousands of dashboard. Um, and all of this, combined with the complexity, combined with a very demanding, but we love them, user, <laughs> more than 2,000 user uh, in, a weekly, uh, in a weekly basis. So all, everything combined leads to some major pain points that we face in a daily basis. And it's not just our data team, but also our user, right? So the first of all, um, mainly it's, you, uh, it creates two main pain points, which is productivity and government. But in a real sense, it's actually the times that you actually need to spend um, when you want to search for a particular uh, question, right? You can imagine like 
uh, outside a company, when you have a question, you can simply Google search it uh, and get the reference, read all of it through, and provide an answer. And you'll want to do the same when you're in a company, right, like us. Um, so it just takes so much time. A person for, to answer a particular question, they would need more than one hour on average. Sometimes they would need more than one day because we just realized that, oops, we don't have that data, so we might need to go to the product team and actually produce the, those data. Um, and secondly, it's also taking a lot of time for us. Product team, like PMs, engineer, a lot of them actually end up going to us because they want to ask, like, hey, um, I know the data is there, but I'm not quite sure whether the data quality is on check. So um, can you run some query and check it for us? Or, so I know the data is there, I check it by myself, the data quality is pretty good, but I'm not sure whether it's already updated in, in, for today. So a lot of this thing also adds up to our plate as well, and it takes a lot of our time, which we are not supposed to be doing that, we're supposed to be building products. So, and the last part is because people find it hard and takes too much time to actually um, find data, they recreate a lot of the data object that we already provide to them and recreating a lot of dashboard as well. So that's the reason why we create our own internal tool, which is a data discovery tool, which we call DataDex, which basically, it's literally like, a, we want to build it like a Google search for all of the data that we have at Gojek. So it compiles a lot of the main data products that um, pe people are using inside our company, which is BigQuery, dashboard, uh, dashboard from Metabase, and as well, a lot of analysis that are made from the data teams. And what's powerful with this is actually reduce a lot of the time that was previously wasted to get to, to, get to the answer quickly. So now I'm gonna pass it down to Dimas. Um, <laughs> so Dimas here will talk about the backend of Datadex, as well as the limitation and why we choose data catalog. Yeah. Okay. Oops, sorry. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Renta. <clears throat> I believe all of you I already hear how great uh, Datadex is, and however, this is the back end of it. So we are using BigQuery as our main of that, uh, data sources. We have all of the metadata there, and then what happens is we have one job, which is extracting all of our metadata, and we grouping it into its types, like which one is the data set, which one is the tables, which one is the uh, column level. After that, we store all of the metadata into the cloud SQL, and export it back to transform into JSON, and push it back to the Elasticsearch, which is Elasticsearch will become our backend for the data decks, so it doesn't need to go to the cloud SQL, but it needs to go to the Elasticsearch. By having this architecture, actually we are solving that solution, but we create another one. So what happened is now our maintenance is more and more complex because once we are giving a BigQuery as our metadata, a lot of requests coming in like, can you please provide metadata for Google Cloud Storage? Can you please provide metadata for Tableau dashboard? All of them are coming into our request. And the second one is our search result, research result might be inaccurate. Why? Because all of these jobs are running in daily. And the third one is engineering effort to maintain all of the metadata since the number of our BigQuery tables, columns is increasing instantly. Currently we have more than 36,000 of table and more than 700 columns in our BigQuery. So, when we are facing this difficulty, data catalog team came to us and they have data catalog as a solution. We are starting our collaboration, collaborations uh, since July 2nd, 2018 as an early access user for this program. It's a great to have Sekar and the team, uh, they are really supporting us uh, for our needs in solving data discovery issue. So like an example, they provide one of the not uh, GS client API even before it is released in the alpha. And besides that, we are also saving number of development because we know there are so many features that will be available in data catalog and we do not need to developing that. So from that previous architecture, we are going to the simplicity architecture. It's only a data dex connect to the data catalog API. What is the advantages by having this architecture? First, there is really no operation required to maintain all of the infrastructure and availability of the metadata. 
Why? Because data, data catalog are able to provide a real-time uh, metadata. Once we are creating a, a BigQuery table, then it will be automatically shown in data catalog API. And the third one, we believe with data catalog, there will be more and more features coming in, and it will be make us more focused into creating a business and technical metadata instead of developing the uh, data discovery tools. Okay, I think we can go to the demo for this. Let's go to the demo too. Okay. Cool, okay, let's start. Um, so for, for the first case, um, okay, so before we start, this is dummy data, even though <laughs> the schema is exactly what we have internally, but all this value are um, dummy data. So let's start. So one first use case is, for example, I'm an analyst and I wanna find um, a, I want to find a commission for a particular merchant uh, for their GoFood booking. So let's search for that. Okay, so you would like to have analysis for that. Um, let's find out the merchant, commission, GoFood booking. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Go? Let's go. Okay. Here is the result. Hmm. Okay, let's see. Hmm. Okay, from all of this option, I want to see a summary table that is updated daily. So that means the abbreviation would be S for summary and D for daily. Let's choose the first one. Cool. So as a first search result, hmm. this is the tables details. Okay, cool. What so do you want to see? I want to see where it lies on. It's in Project BI Gojek. It's in Dataset Access and Type Table. Cool. Let's go to the schema and see. I'm particularly interested on a metrics name called um, Merchant Commission. Sure, it should be there. Here it is. Hmm. Well, okay. So that's solve it. Hmm. But let I want to check whether the data quality is on track, whether it's actually trustable. Can we go to the text and see? Sure, here it is. We have two kind of text, the technical hmm. and the data governance metadata. Hmm. Okay, so the data quality score 100%, so it's perfect. Let's just go to the source, to go to the link, and use that data. Sure, Cool. Here it is. So that's the first use case as an analyst. You just want to find out a specific keyword and it will redirect you directly to the data source. It will go to the uh, table in BigQuery. Um, so on the next use case, which is as a data governance personnel. So for example, like the m easiest way, like the most basic way to figure out you have a data quality issue as to, um, is from the raw differences between one day to another, right? So let's take the extreme. <laughs> so let's search okay. for the raw differences that is more than one million. Sure, let me type this first. Raw differences, the differences is one million. Yeah, okay. One million or more. Yeah, just for not, we are still using EAG because we are in early R phaser, but <laughs> I believe it will change the future. <laughs> Go for it? Yes. Let's check. Uh, hopefully, there's no. Uh. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so apparently, there, we have found an issue in this particular table at the Go Points voucher transaction. So let's click on it and see. Oops, here it is. Okay, so there's more than four million row differences. Hmm. Let's. Um, I would like to know um, what's the source for this table. So sure. maybe let's search for like future transaction. Right? Yeah, sure. Because it is line in staging data set, which is it is in the raw data layer. Yeah. So we can go directly to the Google Cloud Storage because it is source of the table. Let's yes. find out for the future transaction. And go to the Google Cloud Storage mm -hmm. because we have to see the file. Ah, yeah, here it is. We find the source of this table. Cool. So as you can see here, um, you'll be able to locate the where the bucket lies and also the file to that, uh, path as well. And let's see the file as well within the file. Okay. Sure. 
So by using the Takatola API, actually it's automatically transform our Google Cloud Storage into a pattern. Mm -hmm. So we know which one of the files, uh, file name that we need to change into our request. Mm -hmm. So by using this, you can directly just copy and paste it and go directly to the GCL file and create a table in BigQuery and being able to uh, analyze it and which part does go wrong and fix it. Yep, that's okay. all for our demo. That's cool. So, um, so from all of our session, from our session, basically what we're trying to say is, um, data discovery is a pain point for us. We have built it by ourselves and faced a lot of problems by maintaining by ourselves, and it just makes much more sense for us to actually use data catalog and the flexibility that it actually gave us by using the API and having our own front end interface. Um, which can cover a lot of our like custom needs. It really does work and help. <laughs>